everybody. I hope you are enjoying Azure Community Conference so far. And thank you so much for joining my talk, What's New with Xamarin? I'm Maddie Legere. I'm a program manager on the Xamarin team, and I focus on developer productivity. So before we dive into what Xamarin is up to these days, let's talk a little bit about .NET all up. So if you're unfamiliar, .NET is the free cross-platform, open source platform that you can use to build all different types of applications. It supports different languages and editors and libraries, and you can build apps for web and mobile and gaming and IoT and all of the things. Xamarin is the mobile part of .NET. So if you're a .NET developer now and you don't work with Xamarin, you can actually reuse a lot of the same skills you have, um, whether that's C Sharp or MVVM, uh, and you can use those right within the Xamarin platform. And, and you'll see in, in the demos later how similar they really are. The .NET ecosystem is growing and thriving as much as it's ever been. C Sharp continues to rank highly in, in the top lists of languages. It's top five on GitHub. Um, .NET Core is the number one most loved framework for the Stack Overflow developer survey for the past two years. And 40% of new .NET developers are students. So we're seeing a lot of interest from new developers coming in to start getting up to speed with the .NET platform. And you're, if you're a .NET developer, you're one of 5 million others. So there are plenty of you out there, um, and you're targeting all different things, whether that's Windows or Linux or cloud computing, all that, and of course, Xamarin with mobile. So at Xamarin, our mission is to delight developers by giving you the most amount of shared code targeting mobile apps using .NET. So what does that actually look like? Well, in this, this diagram, you can kind of see you have your iOS, Android, and Windows projects. And, and those things, you can access the native APIs using C Sharp. So if I want to access very specific Android functionality using C Sharp, I can do that. And then I have these two middle layers here, Xamarin Essentials and Xamarin Forms. And we'll talk a lot about what's coming out in Xamarin Essentials and Xamarin Forms today. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with them, they are the device and UI shared libraries for Xamarin developers. So with Xamarin Essentials, you can access shared device functionality like opening files in a certain, certain explorer or opening the browser or turning on the flashlight, things that all devices have. I mean, with Xamarin Forms, you can write your UIs in XAML and C Sharp and share them across all the platforms using the native controls under the hood. So your users feel at home with the app that they're building. And of course, all of your business logic can be shared in C Sharp or F Sharp, whatever you want to write your business logic in in .NET. It's a shared .NET standard project. And that same business logic can be reused in other .NET apps as well. So we see a lot of developers coming over from desktop or for web, going to mobile. And, and if you're a .NET developer, you're going to feel right at home with Xamarin. And in some cases, you'll be able to use some of the code you already have. Um, I talked a little bit about the .NET community, but of course, the Xamarin community is also amazing. There are so many extensions beyond just what you can get in .NET um, that, that work and are especially for Xamarin, such as like the Lottie Animation Library, makes your mobile app animations gorgeous, um, and a whole bunch of other things that make your development ecosystem really, really robust. So we see incredible apps built with Xamarin and, and our amazing community, and, and it's impossible to fit everybody on a slide. So if you're on here, thank you. And if you're not on here, also thank you. Uh, send me your logo, and I'll see if I can squeeze in the next one. So before we get uh, all of our existing Xamarin developers really excited about what's new, we want to make sure that we're making it as easy as possible for new Xamarin developers to come into our ecosystem. So if you're someone that hasn't used Xamarin yet, it's just a checkbox in the Visual Studio installer. And it's actually over twice as fast to install and, and almost a quarter of the size it used to be. It's five or six gigs now. Check the box off, Visual Studio will install it for you. Bada bing, that's it. You're off and running. We install everything you need to get started writing mobile apps with .NET, including the under the hood Android stuff. Uh, you can develop without a Mac getting started to your iPhone. We'll, we'll see a demo of that shortly. And that's all within that really small six gig package. So you can, while you're watching this talk, go into the Visual and Studio installer, hit modify, check off Xamarin, and be, off, be on your way shortly after, uh, after I finish. We've also totally redone the new app experience. 
So with with desktop apps and web apps, you know, you're you're used to certain things. There's usually tabs across the top, or maybe there's a flyout or a hamburger menu or whatever you want to call it. Um, but but when you're presented with all these options, you might not know what they're supposed to look like on mobile yet. So we redid the whole getting started experience with these nice little gifts, and uh, they help you really visualize what your app is going to look like. And it uses a unified navigation stack under the hood for all of these called Xamarin Forms Shell. That came out with Xamarin Forms 4. We're at 5 now. Um, but it sets your app up for you with navigation and sample data and uh, sample assets and all the things that you need to kind of get a feel for how this platform works based on the previews that you see in these GIFs. So I said it earlier, my job is really focusing on developer productivity. Um, and when, when I think about developer productivity, I think of four main pillars. I think of coding faster, uh, and that gives you, that's things that if you're a Visual Studio developer, you're already really familiar with. Things like IntelliSense, um, IntelliCode, which is newer and is fantastic, supports XAML and Android XML. Um, we have multi-targeting in our future. And of course, there are things like SourceLink that you can use in .NET development that make uh, it really easy to investigate what's going on in, in things you've pulled into your project. The second pillar I look at is build and deployment. So when you build, especially with the mobile world, there's quite a few steps that has to happen. Your app has to be packaged and signed and then pushed over to the device or the emulator and then started up. Um, and, and that is a big, big thing that the Xamarin team focuses on improving is building faster, deploying faster. Um, and when you make small changes, making builds as small as possible, when you make build, big changes, maybe the build takes a little bit longer, but all those changes are going to get pushed through. So then you have the app on your device, you're coding it, you're building and deploying it. It's on the device. Now you have to start it up. Um, and, and with starting up, apps, you also have to think about your app size. So this is kind of what your end users experience when you're building mobile apps. Um, with, with startup tracing, you can actually use ahead of time compilation on Android um, and save a bunch of startup time without actually costing yourself a lot of size. And with app bundles on Android, you can choose just what your customer, your end user needs on that device. So if it's a really high resolution device, they only get the high resolution images. And if they only speak one language, they only get the language pack for that one, for that language that they pick, um, which really helps keep the app size down. And these are also, uh, app bundles in particular are something that the Android native platform introduced and we brought into Xamarin. So Xamarin is always aligned with our native stacks. Our, we, we stay up to date. You get virtually same day support for most major operating system releases. Um, and we also love to bring in native features that we see Google and Apple kind of develop and, and bring out to their developers. We want to make sure that you can adv take advantage of those things too. Finally, the way we kind of build on top of the native platforms is we give you tools inside of Visual Studio to help you iterate on your app faster. So like I said, Xamarin Forms, you can use XAML to build your UIs. And we've given you XAML Hot Reload that lets you instantly update uh, and view the changes that you made in your XAML code without even having to restart or redeploy the app. We also have Hot Restart for iOS devices, um, which lets you debug straight to an iPhone, which we'll look at in a second, uh, from your PC. So if you're a developer and you're at home right now and you only have a PC and you have an iPhone and you've never really been able to do an iOS app because you don't have a Mac, um, you can actually get started with Xamarin and just your device. You do need an Apple developer account to distribute it, but it can give you an idea of what your Xamarin app will look like on iOS without having to pull out a Mac. So let's take a look at some of these iteration features that we have in Xamarin to make your life easier. So this is an app I've been working on. I call it my plant care app. Um, to help me figure out how to take care of all the plants I've bought over the past few months. And I've got it running on the right here in UWP. Um, and I've got Visual Studio 2019 on the left. So I am using an internal preview for this demo, but everything I'm going to show you today, you can do right now in Visual Studio, and I'll show you how to turn it all on. So this app is uh, pretty simple, and we'll take a look at how Xamarin Forms 5 can make it really gorgeous. But the first thing I want to do right now is start hot reloading. 
So I can go ahead, I can change the background color of this page and I get this great IntelliSense auto completion here. And once I hit enter, I don't even have to hit save. My UWP app refreshes uh, just what's changed and updates with the new background color. And I can switch back really quickly. And on the left here, I have something called the live visual tree where I can click in and see exactly what my app's UI is made up of. So in this case, it's a shell app. I mentioned that's how we do navigation in Xamarin Forms. Um, and it's got two tabs. And on this tab, this first tab I'm on, it's got a stack layout with a frame and a carousel view. And if I want to go see this carousel view, I can click this icon right here and it brings me to where in the code that's defined. So this is supposed to show me the name of my plant right here. And that's for some reason not showing up, but I'm data binding it. So I can probably guess that there might be something wrong with my data binding. And to check that, I can click this button right here. And it brings me to the XAML binding diagnostics window. I can see I spelled name wrong in the binding path. So before we fix that, let's switch over to Android, take a look at this app over there, um, and how we can use the same tooling on Android to hot reload and all the things. So I already have my emulator running. Oop, let me resize it a little bit. Nice. Um, this is just an Android emulator, nothing fancy. It is running on Hyper-V. So it's super snappy and fast. I have an AMD computer and, and with one of the earlier Windows builds, we actually started being able to support AMD CPUs and Hyper-V with Android emulators. And it's, it's really great. It's super fast um, and it's really, really responsive. So made my home development life a lot easier with my, my home PC. So the same app pops right back up, um, nice and snappy. It's a carousel view here. So I should be able to swipe through all the different plants I have, but I'm still having that same binding failure. Now, because this is an emulator, I don't get that same window I got on top with the Windows app, uh, but I can still go to my binding failures pane here. And I can see the same binding failure I spelled name wrong. So let's go and fix this. And I've actually defined this data locally. So I can just change this to binding dot. I've, I've defined it in my XAML, so I don't have to do any data binding. Um, and I'm gonna refresh this, and then I'm gonna start swiping through. Give the carousel view a second to update and Hot Reload's gonna pop it over, and then now I have my plant name right there in my app. And so that was Hot Reload that did that, and that's the same Hot Reload that's gonna change this background color to and from this dark green. Without saving, without anything, I impulsively save a lot, but it's not gonna break it, it's still gonna update it. It's the same live visual tree, so it's the same XAML UI running on this Android app right now. I've got that carousel view, you can go to where it is in the XAML. It's all in this one shared Xamarin project. So that's Android, we looked at UWP briefly, but let's also talk about how to get this running on iOS. So typically my development loop has been an Android emulator in Visual Studio, but I actually also have an iPhone and I haven't turned on my Mac in a long time, so I don't know where it's at, um, but I do wanna see what this app is gonna look like on iOS. So I changed my target here to iOS and then I wanna change my CPU to iPhone. And I can see my iPhone pops right up as a deployment target. And this is because of something called Hot Restart. So I'm already screen mirroring my phone. I'm using something called Reflector 3, which actually lets me airplay my iPhone straight onto my PC. I'll drag it over here. Oh, okay, it's all in place. Um, and so Reflector, that's this little app icon down here. It's a really cool tool I like to use for uh, um, demos and also for development sometimes if my iPhone's kind of out of reach. So I'll start debugging this on my iPhone and I'll give it a second. You can see it's gonna start building everything. Everything's up to date, succeeded. And we're gonna give it a second for the debugger to turn on. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Uh, like I said, it's an internal VS. So it's a little bit slower than I like it to be, um, but it's still pretty snappy. It was only a couple seconds to deploy it. So I'll click the app, I'll get it to start running. Uh, and you can see XAML Hot Reload connects right away. I've got that same live visual tree here. Again, it's the same XAML, the same code I was using before. And of course, I can hot reload anywhere. Bam, that's it. Right away, it updates. So this is really helpful for me because now I can see that my app looks pretty similar, but not exactly the same on iOS, Android, and Windows. And that's because Xamarin uses the native controls under the hood. So in this case, I kind of like that my tabs look more like iOS tabs and, and my Android tabs look like Android tabs, but we also have some tools that uh, can help you bring those two things look closer together, looking closer together. So we'll look at those um, towards the end of this presentation as well. 
Before I flip back into my slides, I want to show you how to turn all of this on if it's not already. So you have to have the latest Visual Studio 16.8 came out with .NET Conf. I'm going to stop debugging this. Then you're going to want to go into Tools, Options, and check two things. The first is that Hot Reload is using the newest Hot Reload, XAML Hot Reload 2.0, rebuilt from the ground up. You can check it out in Debugging, Hot Reload. We've consolidated all of our settings to be in one place. So your UWP Hot Reload and your Xamarin Hot Reload, all same area. And then scroll down to the Xamarin form section down here and just make sure that the changes only radio button is selected. And that will give you the live visual tree and UWP support for your Xamarin forms apps. Now hot restart is still a preview feature, but all you have to do to turn it on is go to this really nifty menu environment preview features, which is one of my favorite places to scroll around and see what's new um, and find enable Xamarin hot restart, check it off, restart the IDE. And the next time you plug in your iPhone, once you have iTunes installed so that the iPhone can communicate with your PC, it's going to prompt you to log in with your Apple account ID. It's going to provision the device and you're going to be off to the races. It's a, it's a really great process. So just make sure you have a paid Apple developer account. Uh, we are looking at free account support, uh, hopefully in the future. So right now you need it to be paid, but it's still a preview feature. Um, and of course, to distribute an iPhone app, to not debug it, uh, you do need to have that paid Apple developer account and a Mac to distribute with. So that's how you turn these things on. We're not quite done with this app yet. We'll come back to it. Um, in, the, in the second demo when we talk a little bit more about the Xamarin Forms, excuse me, the Xamarin Forms 5 features. So let me click back in my slides, present from here. Everything gets back set up. Okay, nice. I've got the multi-monitor life, so, you know, sometimes things pop up in the wrong place, and that was, that was pretty good. So like I said, uh, 16.8, it's out, go grab it, try these things. Uh, the XAML data binding diagnostics window is also part of 16.8. Um, and, and it's actually really helped me a lot when I've been working with my apps. I'm not the best at data binding. I tend to forget what I call things and then just guess and then wonder my, why my app is broken. So let's talk about more of the SDK side of things. And I talked about Xamarin Forms and I talked about Xamarin Essentials. So those are your logos on the left and right here. But there's also something I want to talk about this today called the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So we'll get to all three of these. First and foremost, though, let's talk about Xamarin Essentials 1.6. So I was using the 1.6 preview in the app that I was just showing. Um, and I'll play this video. But it's got a whole bunch of support for new device functionality that's come out recently, including app actions. So that's when you hover over the app and then you can do something like a shortcut without having to go into the app and navigate it itself. It's got a, the file picker support. So you can see that's the native Android file picker it's using in there. Uh, that's no code that you have to write yourself. You just call the device file picker, likewise with iOS. Um, and same thing with media, as well as support for contacts, haptic feedbacks, and screenshotting. So it's a really, really powerful release. Um, I've been really excited about app actions in particular. I, I, I like right clicking and making a new or long pressing and making a new calendar event really quickly with a uh, Google calendar. So I'm really excited to put that into my apps as well. Xamarin Essentials is on Nougat. You can, you can pull it down, just check off show pre-release and you'll get uh, the 1.6 pre-releases. So Xamarin Forms has been uh, maturing a lot. And last year at Ignite in the fall, we we were, I believe, at Xamarin Forms 4.2. Last two builds ago, we were at Xamarin Forms 4.0. So the last year plus, not quite the last year, but the last big number of Xamarin Forms, we've released a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it's been in preview. Some of it came out really quickly. People started using it right away. Um, but there have been so many things that we've actually seen customers who previously had custom code written for Android and iOS when Xamarin Forms couldn't, you know, didn't have the right control for them. They've actually been pulling out all that custom code and replacing it with Xamarin Forms controls that are in the box now because it's just become so much more mature and robust over the past couple of years. Um, this is a big list. I'm not going to talk about it too much because this is all the past. Uh, some of these things were things that were preview in Xamarin Forms 4, though, and are now coming to Xamarin Forms 5.0, which is in pre-release right now. It'll be shipping later this year, by the end of the year. Uh, this holiday season, I like to say, for anyone who celebrates kind of the, the traditional December holidays. 
let's take a look at what's in Xamarin Forms 5. First and foremost, brushes. I'm very excited. I love gradients. I know not everyone loves gradients, uh, but Xamarin Forms 5 comes with brushes, which gives you the ability to do gradients and draw these lines here with backgrounds, all these things. Uh, radial gradients, left to right, top corner to bottom corner, all the things. Uh, and, and that can really bring kind of a next level to your app if you want to do that. If you don't want gradients, you don't have to have gradients. I know they're a polarizing topic. Something in the app that I showed you that's already in there, and, and we'll be adding some of these other features in in the next demo, but is the carousel view. And this is what I like to think of, like the online shopping view. So when you have a pair of sunglasses you like and you scroll to see it in all the different angles, that's what the carousel view is. Um, and it's just it works just like a list view in Xamarin. It's got an item source that you can data bind to. It's got current items that you can have actions on. Um, and then you can set a data template. So it can look like whatever you want inside of that carousel view. We now have support for drag and drop. So this is actually uh, part of a requirement we heard from developers targeting the Surface Duo. So I'm not talking about dual screen in this session, unfortunately, but you can imagine that you'd want to drag something from one part of your app to the other part of your app, maybe across both screens. So we have first party support now for drag and drop actions in your Xamarin Forms apps. Um, and you can see it's just drag and drop gesture recognizers using the existing gesture recognizer frameworks that we have built into the SDK already. Uh, something I'm pretty excited about is control templates in our radio buttons. So you can see this is a kind of the basic radio button, which we've built in for you now, shared across all the platforms. But you can also customize it to have a calendar or whatever icon you want, a uh, really custom experience for your app and your users and, and what you want your UI to look like. And it's the same cross-platform. Uh, one other thing that I'm really excited about, and this kind of goes along with the, the brushes, but uh, the shapes and paths API we have in Xamarin Forms 5 is awesome. You can make lines and dots and circles and rectangles and blah, blah, blah. But you can also do fancier things like uh, make this conversation bubble with this little triangle down here and draw SVGs using paths. So using the source for an SVG, you can actually put that right into your XAML and have that show up in your Xamarin app. So this uh, UI here was built all with the new shapes and paths API, and I think it's pretty gorgeous. Uh, and of course, the email control, I call it, swipe view. Um, this is also a good example of checkout pages, but when you want to move something left to right uh, and, and favorite it or delete it or whatever it is, um, you can use swipe view for that in Xamarin Forms. So it's super, super powerful. You can customize however many items you want on both sides. You can make it have actions. You can make it stay open. You can make it pop you to a different page. Whatever you want to do, it's all built right in. And it can help you expose some really modern app experiences to your users. Now, this doesn't show everything we've got that's new in Xamarin Forms 5. But I also want to mention something else we have, which is the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And this is a, uh, it's on the Xamarin GitHub, but it's maintained by a bunch of our amazing community members. And it's used to do, to put code that most people write when you write a Xamarin app. But that doesn't make sense to really have kind of in the SDK. So there's things like uh, a bunch of XAML converters. There's effects for things like the safe area on an iPhone, different views, object models that can help you get started with less boilerplate code, uh, behaviors, all these things. And some of the features that we want to bring to Xamarin Forms proper, but we want to iterate on really fast. We want to update all the time. And one of those is C-Sharp UI, which I'm really excited about. Uh, you can actually build your UI entirely in C-Sharp now. And you've always been able to do that. Um, you can just use the C-Sharp version of whatever you're doing in XAML. But this is a new declarative markup meant specifically for writing UIs in C-Sharp without XAML. So it's super easy, very, very fluid. And um, IntelliSense, of course, supports it. And you can start using this if you're, if you want to stay in that same language by getting the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And you can make entirely C Sharp UI pages. There's also different UI controls that we're not quite ready to put in Xamarin Forms, like this expander. I love this one. The bread gets very long. Uh, the dairy products, great for a shopping list. You can see it's not a lot of code. Um, and it's, and it's pretty nice. Uh, the tab view. So I mentioned, you know, iOS and Android, their tabs look different by default. Some people like that, some people don't. With TabView, you can actually create your own custom tab bar and it can look however you want, whether you want it to have a big green button on the side or in the middle, whatever it is, 
Um, you can customize it really easily with the Xamarin Community Toolkit tab bar, tab view. And the app bar, uh, which is pretty cool, if you want the background of your app bar to have colors or a picture or even a GIF, uh, you can do that with the Xamarin Community Toolkit as well. So let's take a look at the Xamarin Forms 5 features we have, um, some of them, and try and apply those to that plant app that we were working on because it definitely could use a facelift. So I'll click out of that. And let's change the background color of this app back to light green. Hit enter. Um, and before I start debugging this, I want to show you not something that's not quite a Xamarin Forms 5 feature, but I think should be included in all of the What's New Talks with Xamarin right now because I love it. Um, and it is the ability to share fonts cross-platform. So I'll go into my resources here. And I can see I have some fonts in here, uh, true type fonts, open type fonts, uh, that I've already loaded in. And I've set them as embedded resources. So they're in the Xamarin Forms project, this .NET standard project, but I can share them now cross-platform. And let's go apply this to the app, kind of that header bar that was a plain font. I want to make that uh, one of these fonts, the, the Michelle Garden one. So I'll uncomment this. And before this demo, I actually did expose these uh, in my assembly info. So you can see it's just a font, and I exported my font as Michelle. Uh, and when I build and run this app, it's going to use that new app because I have it set as a style in my app.xaml for my header labels. So it takes a second to pop up. Boop, 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 boop. Android's thinking, XAML hot reloads initializing. Uh, and there I have my new font right up top, actually, shared cross-platform. Super easy. Um, and like I said, that's not a Xamarin Forms 5 feature, but that is a feature I like a lot. So I, I like to show it. I love having custom fonts on things. All right, let's talk about gradients. Uh, I, I know some people don't love gradients, but I really do. So I'm going to remove uh, the dark green background of this frame up here. Delete that. Um, it's going to go away temporarily. And I'm going to uncomment this code that I wrote for a frame background that uses a linear gradient brush. You can see it gives me this really, really nice uh, ombre effect, gradient effect here. And it's going from 0, 0 to 0, 1. So it's going top left to bottom left, straight up and down. Now what I can do is I can change this to 1, 1, and it's going to become a diagonal gradient. I could change it the other way. I could do 1, 0 to 1, 1, and it would be a left to right gradient. Um, but the important thing is, is that I have two stops. I have a stop with a color of dark green. The offset's at 0.1. That's the lowest offset. And then at the offset of 1, the highest offset, I have my static resource, dark green, not darkest green. And I can change this to my light green. Give it a second. It'll show, show up right there. I can ooh, not save. I can undo that. And I can, of course, add a stop somewhere in here. So put somewhere in the middle of my gradient a different offset. So let's do it at 0.5. Let's have this go light green. This is going to look very weird. But now it goes dark green to light green to the dark green again, to, to the other dark green I have. And I'll get rid of that. So super easy to customize and play around with your gradients. Um, and we do have radi radial gradients as well. So if you want it to kind of change as it goes out in a circle, that's a really cool effect you can use. And that makes the header of my app look a little bit better, except for this little blue bar right here. So by default, our template app for Android wants you to have this nice xamarin blue. But I don't want that. I want that to be my dark green. So let's go into my Android app here. Um, and I'm actually going to overwrite the default settings in my styles. So I can go to, I believe, nope, values. Yes, so many folders. Um, and I've actually already set in the hex codes for these as well, so I'll uncomment this. But I just set color primary and color primary dark to the light green and dark green that I have in my Xamarin Forms app. And I'm going to do something called apply changes. So let's find that button. Beep, beep, beep. I can also go to debug, apply changes, or shift alt F5. And this is an Android feature that lets you build and restart the activity, similar to hot restart with iOS, without having to re-sign and redeploy the whole app. So because it is kind of rebuilding the core of it, um, it's going to take a second, and then it updates. It puts me right back to the beginning of my app, and I have this new dark green app bar up top. So I'll close out of that. Let's go back into the Xamarin Forms side of the house. Uh, let's see what we want to do next. Well, 
what I, my vision for these sun and water sections here was that I have little indicators that showed me like on a scale of one to three or one to five, how much sun or how much water I should be giving my plants. Cause I don't have time to measure it. I just know this one needs more water than that one. So what I want to do there is use some of the shapes in Xamarin Forms 5 to create those icons. Let's go down here. Um, and you can see I have a sack layout with three ellipses in it. Well, uncomment that. Boop, boop. Done. Uh, give it a second to load. Swipe over to a new carousel view to refresh it, to refresh the carousel view. And now I have three circles. So super easy. Ellipse, fill, then I have my darkest maybe a darker than dark green, maybe a black colorish here. Uh, and I can change the color of one of them. Like I'll change this third one to pink. And I'll swipe my carousel view over. And now I can see I have, you know, two dark ones and one light one. Super easy. Just made perfect circles. Um, I can set the, the width and the height of these, of course. And, and I use the stack layout to kind of size and position where I wanted them to go. So let's undo that. And let's do the other set of ellipses down here for the water. Uncomment that, swipe it over, refresh it out, and I can see that my generic plant I'm working with here needs three out of three sun and one out of three water. Um, but I feel like these labels are pretty boring. It just says sun and water. What if I could use an icon? So what I did was I Googled sun icon. Uh, and I found an SVG and I inspected the source code of that SVG and it gave me all of the path data that it was using to draw that SVG. So SVGs are kind of whatever size you want them to be. Um, and I created an absolute layout with the scale that I wanted this uh, sun to be. And I put in the path that the source said. So this is really just drawing, first party drawing APIs with, with shapes and paths. I'm going to delete the label here that says sun. Uh, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll comment it out. Better better to comment and not delete in case I screw something up. Then I'll uncomment my absolute layout code. Um, if you don't know, XML, XAML, control K, C is comment, control K, U is uncomment. Total lifesaver. Um, and I will swipe over. Woo! All right, and there you go. I have a little sun icon right here. Um, drawn right onto the page, nothing fancy, with just this code here that I pulled from an SVG I found on the internet, right click, inspect, copy paste. Um, and that's built right into my Xamarin Forms app now. Uh, and it looks like it belongs there. looks pretty good. So that's pretty much all I want to do with this page for now. Um, actually, there's one more thing and I'm glad I put it in the comments or I probably would have forgotten about it. I want to do this thing called an indicator view. And this is something that goes hand in hand with carousel view, but it tells you how many items are in the carousel. So let's scroll up. Let's look here. Um, I've got a carousel view with an item source. Great. I want to add an indicator view to this. It's just an object I add. And I know I've named it indicator view, but I also want to go down here and uncomment this code where I gave an indicator view some details. So it has a selected color and an, un, uh, an unselected color and a name. So because I'm assigning an X name to it, I believe uh, XAML Hot Reload is going to want me to restart just because I'm instantiating a whole new object. So let's do that real quick. Oop, give it a few seconds. Uh, Android's so, so snappy now. It's just a XAML change. I mean, it's, it's right back up. Um, I remember when I first started doing demos for Xamarin, I used to have to have a talk track for when I had to rebuild an Android project. And now it's done before I can finish rambling. So uh, I have these four little dots down here and they show me where I am in the carousel view. So I'll swipe through. I can see the darkest dot is now the third one because I'm on my third of four plants that I have. Uh, and what's cool is since I'm using this data kind of in line, this I, I call it design time data. Um, I can add another plant like Monstera. It's a plant I don't have yet, but I really want. It adds a fifth indicator view right away. It's going to refresh that carousel view for me and I can swipe and have that item right there. So I can see what this indicator view is going to look like as I add more and more items. XAML Hot Reload makes my life so easy. Add a ton. I can see it looks kind of weird now because I have 15 items. Uh, and undo all that and uh, really quickly play around and just see with fake data what my app is going to look like. Alrighty. Uh, let's look at this page, the My Plants page, Manage Plants. And that font's a little bit small. We can fix that another time. But what I want to do with these items here is create a swipe view. So I've got this delete right here. Let's go take a look at that. 
and I believe this is called whoop, minimize all this stuff in my views, my plants page. Yes. Um, and so I have the same uh, data here. I, I loaded it in locally again. Um, but it's a collection view I'm using now to list all of these things. And within this collection view, I have something called a swipe view. So this is four items in a list. Um, and each item in the list is a swipe view with stuff inside. So I'm using my font image source icon from that material icon font I loaded in and, and that glyph to create this delete icon. And I'm, I'm calling it a left item, my swipe view dot left items. And then I have a swipe item. The text is delete. The background color is white. I can change this purple. It's not going to look very good. Let me just let that refresh. Swipe a different one. Bam. Easy. Undo all that because that looks gross. Um, and what's nice is that my glyph automatically updates based on the background color. Very cool. Uh, and then if I want to do the same swipe view item on the other side, but maybe, you know, call it favorite instead of delete, all I have to do is add a different set of swipe items, call them my right items. Give it a sec. Let's call this favorite. Now when I swipe the other way, swipe right, favorite's right there. Super easy. And of course, this is the same type of data that I was doing on the other page. So I can copy paste this and add another plant uh, and it pops right up. Now change the name of it, Monstero. Ooh. And uh, I have the same swipe items because it's just a collection view. It's just adding an element, adding adding a new data source or data item. Um, and of course, that can be done programmatically and with data binding and all the things that you'd expect in an MVVM application. So carousel view, indicator view, gradients, paths, shapes, SVGs, swipe views. We didn't do drag and drop. Oh my goodness, we didn't do we didn't get to C sharp UI. But there's a bunch of resources all over the internet for these things. Uh, there's a lot of C Sharp UI content coming out right now, and we'll continue to do demos like this. Um, I would also look at David Ortenau's Los Gatos app if you're interested in any of the Xamarin Forms 5 stuff. He did a really good demo app too. But this is my app, so this is the one I like, I like to show off. Let's flip back into the slides to wrap up and talk a little bit about, a little bit about what the future holds for Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. So, uh, Xamarin Forms 5 is out in preview, aka.ms slash xf5. Definitely go download it, check it out. Um, it's, it's really a jam-packed release, as you saw. But the future, past Xamarin Forms 5, is really going to happen with Xamarin Forms, or with .NET 6. So as .NET 5 evolves into .NET 6, we're calling it this one .NET vision that's a wave, in which there's just going to be a single SDK, single base class library, Unified tools, we've already started doing that with things like Hot Reload, cross-platform web UI, cross-platform native UI, more investments, of course, into the cloud, Azure services, diagnostics, all the things, uh, but no .NET standard core framework, just .NET, that's it. And the native UI stack that .NET wants to use for, for uh, kind of native client applications, mobile and desktop, is Xamarin. But Xamarin is going to evolve into something called .NET MAUI. .NET multi-platform app UI. So it's the same thing that Xamarin Forms is now. It's an evolution. Your code is not going to change like crazy. Nothing's going to break. But we're investing a lot into Xamarin to make it faster, to make to give you more controls and more performance, to make the development experience even easier so you can work within one single project instead of the single project and the Android and iOS project and all that. Uh, multi-targeting with things like being able to de deploy to, uh, you know, an iPhone and an Android phone from the same project, not having to switch between projects. It's just an evolution of Xamarin Forms. Like I said, nothing is going to break for you, which is really, really great news. You're going to get advantage to take advantage of, uh, you know, all these great new features without really experiencing much of a disruption. And it's for .NET 6. So the previews are either end of this year, early next year, but you can look on the .NET GitHub at Maui and see all of the things that we're talking about uh, and, and look in the issues and the discussions and chime in with the rest of the team about what you'd like to see in Maui. And so I only have a few minutes left, but I do want to show you some of our uh, concepts that we're working on for Maui with the single project experience. So you can see I had already had my resources with my shared fonts, but we also want to bring in shared images with .NET MAUI. So you'll have the ability to not only share your fonts as an embedded resource, but also share images, whether they're PNGs, maybe SVGs, bring all that right into the Xamarin Forms app. Um, and then all my platform-specific code, 
I won't have any of the boilerplate Android or iOS you see when you expand that project. It's just going to live. Uh, only the things that are custom are going to live right here in the shared app. So everything's in one place, super easy, um, and a lot less projects to manage and you get fun. And of course, we're going to make sure that they're SDK style projects. They use the modern project systems that Visual Studio has. So it's super simple to multi-target and include different references and manage all your NuGets from one place. Uh, this is kind of where we are uh, thinking the namespaces might look like. So system.maui, system.devices instead of Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Essentials. But we're looking at ways to make that transition as non-breaking as possible. Uh, you know, maybe making it so that you can have both namespaces working for a time and, and switch them over. But we'll talk more and more about that as .NET 6 GA gets closer, which is next fall, next November. And that's on this slide, the schedule slide. Um, so Xamarin Forms 5 is now. Uh, Xamarin Forms is going to be supported uh, for about a year after .NET MAUI comes out, the Xamarin Forms name. But .NET MAUI is coming in .NET 6, and it really is just Xamarin Forms be next. Nothing too crazy. No big changes for you. Um, and, and that's going to give you the mobile and desktop support uh, that you want with Xamarin. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, you can see the code on my GitHub. Go to aka.msxf5 for Xamarin Forms 5 info. And of course, go to xamarin.com for all of the Xamarin resources you need to get started or continue to hear about what we're coming out with. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Azure Community Conference. Thank you so much. And feel free to catch me on my email here, maddie at microsoft.com or on Twitter at maddieleger1. See you soon.